Mac, have you started your vlog yet? Are you starting a vlog? Oh, no, no, I did start it. You did? <laughs> yes. How tired are you right now? I'm very tired. Cool. I drove overnight. It is now 5.30 a.m. in Cleveland, and I left Massachusetts yesterday at 7-ish, maybe. So maybe. Um, so that's been my overnight. So I, I did uh, B-roll so far. I haven't done my intro yet. I'm doing it uh, That genocide. counts as starting. That counts as genocide. Yes. Genocide. I started my footage. Good morning. I'm Alex Radford from Board Game Co. And this is Meg. I'm so warm right now. I need some Starbucks egg bites so bad. This is the start of our vlog to, uh, to o Orange Nebula, to Ono. We are heading down there to check out Spirit Fire. So will this vlog have stuff on Spirit Fire? I got no clue. I got nothing. It's going to have stuff have a lot of games. peripheral to Spirit Fire for so, sure. So uh, this is a fun thing for you guys to know. We're flying Frontier and we only have our backpacks. Yeah. That's all we have, which as you can see, I'm carrying three bags right now, so we'll see how that goes. But between the two of us, how many games did we bring? 17. Seven. We'll count. Maybe seven. I don't know. This is a long flight. You're heading to Vegas and to Portland. You got quite a few. I have like four, I think. Maybe five. Maybe I five. Have seven. Yeah, we're not going to play them all. I guarantee it. It's not well, going to happen. Well, three of them are wallet. We're not going to play them all. I guarantee it. This is just how it works. You always. Board gamers. Grant Lyons. I have Grant, high hopes. Grant Game Rex. He's got a bit which is very funny. He talks about how board gamers are always super optimistic. They always think they're going to play more than they actually do. That is true. We're going we're gonna to think we play more than we do. But I think we'll do. I think. What about the monsters? That's one. What about the other nine? I think we'll play them. Challenge accepted. We're going to try to play every single game. Uh, but in the meantime, I think we're going to go ahead and get some uh, coffee and egg bites or whatever it is to charge up the morning before we go to our flight before things are late. So we'll see I you soon. Awesome. So we officially landed in Portland. We're in, we're in Washington now, I think, right? Vancouver. Vancouver. We're in Vancouver. Um, and uh, Sreb Mom, did you know Sreb Mom gave me flack about the fact that my vlog for. Uh, for IV was later than she would have liked it. It was not enough Meg. It was not enough Meg. It was the right amount of Austin. In fact, she said Austin should travel all the time and handle the vlog. So Austin, uh, you heard it here first. You're wanted in more vlogs. Uh, this though is not an IV vlog. This is an Oneb vlog. So <laughs> first of all, Sreb Mom, uh, just so you know, this vlog will be out before Jenna's vlog on uh, Oneb because <laughs> That's how it works. You said Jenna's. I was going to say before Gen Con. Gen, before like, Gen I Con. I certainly hope so. Yeah, but, but yeah. We Alex, why are we here? Why are we here? We're here for Spirit why are Fire. We here? Spirit Fire. That's the right answer, right? Spirit Fire. Spirit Fire. Yeah, we're here for Spirit Fire. This is a uh, Spirit Fire is going to be uh, Oneb's third big game or not. They, they basically had Vindication, they had Unsettled, and now they have Spirit Fire as well. And so from those, um, basically Vindication is one of my favorite games of all time. Unsettled is one of my favorite games of all time, but not as much as Vindication, but it is good. And then we have, lastly, we have Spirit Fire, which I'm excited for. Now, I don't know if Spirit Fire will or won't be included in this vlog. I don't know. We're going to find out ultimately. We'll see. But like, it's because... The question is, there's gonna be like dedicated like first impressions content on Spirit Fire, so like that's a different conversation. So maybe we'll show stuff. Maybe we will. I don't know. Maybe we'll show something funny. So we made our way to the Oneb offices. We'll do some sort of some tour or something because this place is it's very much a geek heaven type of personality, mm -hmm. per place personality, whatever. Um, good morning, Meg. How's it going? Good morning, Alex. Do you yeah. want help with your with videography? I would love help with my videography. Okay. Here we go. We got, we got, we got, basically here's the deal. So we're going to keep it very vague about a bunch of things, but throughout this talk. I just ruined everything, you guys. <laughs> Redo. <laughs> I just spilled my coffee. Uh, oh no. Okay. I ruined a <laughs> lot of things. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Yeah. Well, um, we'll semi cut part of that stuff in. We'll leave it, some of it. We'll figure it out. But anyways, uh, throughout this vlog, we're going to talk a bit about Spirit Fire. Now, the main point of this vlog is the trip. If you want to talk about Spirit Fire, there'll Jake be an interview. Can you get that on the camera? <laughs> yeah, it's, you helped with the vlog, vlogging, right? You guys, I'm the clumsiest human, and I, I'm not going to be invited. <laughs> Chaos is content, right? So, yeah. People will love that part. So the vlog funny. is going to be focusing on the trip and the experience more than actual Spirit Fire. But we will throw Spirit Fire teasers in there. So, just, you know, we have this on the table, just in case you want to see details or pieces. And Eric, you're one of the designers of Spirit Fire, right? One of the That's designers. correct, yeah. So, without getting too much into what Spirit Fire is, we'll keep it nice and vague. Oh, cool. What's your favorite thing with Spirit Fire? Uh, for me, it would be the mechanics of the, the spreads themselves. And these are, um, these are parts where You'll, you'll have an experience and then what you get out of that experience takes you to a spread page in a book. Okay. And then each one is sort of like a, its own unique mini game. 
and um, then you'll be playing your cards and stuff and, and doing whatever it, the, the mechanics of the spread are. That is my favorite part, but I'm more mechanically driven. So I mean, I'm very mechanically driven. I don't know enough about Spiritfire yet, but that sounds interesting. <laughs> and this this puzzle looks interesting. I mean, I'm a big fan of Vindication, a big fan of Unsettled. I know from Mark that this definitely plays off of those those core game concepts, I guess, as far as how you built out Spiritfire while being very much its own totally different thing at the same time. So I'm intrigued. I'm interested. But we'll be back with more Spiritfire and... Uh, more coffee later. <laughs> well, after that happy accident. Well, Meg, you haven't actually played Spiritfire yet, and you know like nothing about it. But I just asked Eric this question, so I'm gonna ask you this question. What's your favorite part of Spiritfire? These dice. So far, I really like these dice. They're very pleasing. To me, they look like little runes, and as someone who plays, they're not showing right. As someone who plays D and D, I've seen a lot of iterations of D4s, and I prefer this. This is very nice. Yeah. I like so you're how saying matches. these are the best. D4s you've ever seen. <laughs> this, this is my preferred D4 shape. Excellent. This is my preferred D4. Versus everything else in the world. Any other D4 get out of here. Trash. I mean, I just played Apiary. They have bees. They're like bees that are D4s. Well, I haven't seen those yet. Have you seen those? Do you want to see this? I, I, I will withhold my statement until further <laughs> bees dice have been seen. Sorry about that. Uh, for me, I haven't played Spirit Fight either yet, but so far my favorite part is, I mean, you said the second with the spreads, but like, yeah. I'm just seeing like, how many pages do you have of these? You can say no comment. Many. Yeah. Many. Mm -hmm. Many. Yeah. But like, we were just talking about how this looks familiar yet different. It looks intriguing, it looks engaging, and just like, again, just this looks right here, it looks like we have a puzzle. It looks like we have a different puzzle. I don't know what these puzzles are doing, but I, I kind of want to figure it out. I want to mm -hmm. play the puzzle and then navigate the puzzle and figure out if I'm good at the puzzle or if the puzzle is engaging enough. But it is, it is just visually, it's pleasing. The game might be terrible, I have no idea, I haven't played yeah. it yet. I'm just I'm saying my, <laughs> my current, my favorite part currently. But maybe we'll ask this question multiple times about the vlog. Sure. What's your favorite part of Spirit Well, part? I was gonna say, my favorite part currently are these, but I believe what I think will be my favorite be part, what I believe, um, will be like the character customization, because I believe there's a, a lot you get to do to develop your character in the beginning and stuff like that, and that's something I really enjoy, so I'm excited to learn about that, but I don't know it yet. Cool. Well, we're about to hop in and see the actual trailer for the game and find out a drop more about the game, and maybe maybe we'll show that uh, right about now as well. Play the trailer, Alex. Smooth <laughs> cut there. The <laughs> Sorry, we have a last second update. We just have to do this throughout the entire vlog. Meg, what's your favorite part of Spirit Fire? The marbles. <laughs> The most generic marble of all time. <laughs> we just, we had a moment, we figured out there's a new favorite part, it's all exciting. Times are changing, things are moving, happening. Things are happening fast here at the ONEP offices. Yeah. You've always sensed something more, tucked quietly away within you. A spark, a radiance, flickering with life. A fire inside that is greater than you, and yet somehow is you. The time has come to let it out. This experience is personal. There is no set story for you to follow, because you are the story. Your journey will take you through mysterious realms, each full of wonders and intrigue. You'll find stories you can integrate into your own, and moments that will take you by surprise. Your drive to discover will determine which parts of these realms you uncover, and your curiosity will reveal hidden opportunities that might easily go overlooked. It's up to you to decide what is worthy of your spark. The significance of any given moment will be defined by your choices and by your resolve to reach for something more. To simply endure is to stand unchanged. Press in and you may find something new flickering inside you, a deeper discernment. With this, you will determine and discover who you will become. Each challenge you face will require a fresh approach and the ability to adjust as needed. You will tap into forces within, infinitely more useful to you and wildly more powerful than a sword. Your understanding, your will, your essence. You will also need to reach outward, staking your trust not on equipment and a pack of provisions, but on connections to the world around you. 
to arcane aspects of reality, surpassing but interacting with the physical. Beneath it all, enabling everything you do, is spirit fire. Wild and potent, intimate yet unknowable, it is the source of mystery and the revealer of truth. Through it, you will seek to discover who you truly are. Tend your fire with care, though, or it may burn out of control. The impact of your actions and exploration will be wide-ranging, affecting both you and the world around you. Sometimes your experiences will lead to growth, sometimes to scars. Occasionally, the environment will evolve and new opportunities will present themselves, at times because of your actions, at times in spite of them. As your journey wears on, your internal spark will diminish. With care and temperateness, you can rekindle it, for a time. But, inevitably, the day will come when your spark will run out and you will face the final act of your passage through this life. In the end, the measure of your efforts is what you did with your spark while it burned. What did you become? And what ancestral legacy did you leave as a foundation for those who follow? What did you do in this dark world with the flame you carried? So I finally played through Spirit Fire, and I think at this point I can say my favorite part, and, and through is a relative term, there's so much going on, we'll talk about it. Make sure to watch the whole like first impressions video, we'll get more into it. But I think my favorite part so far is the optimization, which is standard for me for, for an Orange Nebula game, from Vindication to Unsettled, the idea that you're trying to optimize around, it's just a billion little things, and they, they really gave you a system, watch, watch the first impressions video, it'll cover more of it. But we're gonna move on. I'm gonna do a bit of an Orange Nebula tour, kind of, of the offices. There's a very, very cool office situation going on here. Um, I'm gonna try not to invade people's personal cubby space too much, but I kind of have to for this giant Lego set over here. Like, we got like a full-on Garmadon set of just like Lego and all these fun things and little miniature just stuff going on. So you can see, you know, just if you're a Lego fan, there's things here for you. I guess to an extent, but yeah, we have everything, like every office is set up just a little differently. We got some more Lego plants over here. We got a lot of, um, I don't know, we got some Arkham Horror fan stuff over here. These, these photo boxes, I can't remember the name of the company that makes them, but they are very cool as far as these layered photo boxes. They have them for Vindication as well, which I don't know if they're like officially for sale or who knows what. We got this guy, we got him. He has so many fun little bobbleheads. I'm like holding this guy by his head, forgetting that he's a bobblehead. But all these, like every office just has so much personality as far as the various things that they have in it. I'm gonna show you, we're actually setting up right now for the first impressions video. Here's the, here's the light box. I think they're called light boxes, right? Is that what they're called? The reflecting light, that's for sure. That's gonna be your Vindication box. We have Vindication, one of my favorite games of all time. I was not paid to say that, but I've said it enough. We have over here, I think, is that, is that Unsettled? I think that's a real Unsettled. That's very cool. Unsettled is also one of my favorite games of all time. Below Vindication for me, but still definitely amazing. But yeah, we got just a lot of cool things. Just if we, we got like a bicycle hanging up, which I'm pretty sure is, I can't tell if it's art or like function. I'm not sure behind me. I mean, it could work either way, but I don't know. We just got a lot of things on this, just these, these shelves, just like lots of character. We got some Shovel Knight, we got video games, we got D&D, &D, we got dice sets, we got mushrooms. We got little keys, which are less cool. We got Harry Potter, who looks weirdly like an adult and a child at the same time, which is kind of throwing me off, but it is what it is. We got this little lamp that I'm trying to get into the set of the video. This little lamp next to me. See, it adds a little bit of background depth. If I can get me, let's do like this. See, there we go. Background depth. Now it looks like a better, better video quality. But anyways, yeah, that's where we are so far. So today has been about, about seven hours of just straight, straight spirit fire and conversations around the game. You see, here's the problem with spirit fire. Spirit Fire is a, it's not an easy game to explain. It's not an easy game to explain. There's so much going on in Spirit Fire in terms of, I'm gonna try to do my best to give you a little bit of a pitch. We're not gonna go too much into it because, well, I just don't want to, but I don't want to do it in this video. We're gonna do it in the first impressions. Spirit Fire is a living legacy game. 
that's the best thing I can kind of say about it. Well, I don't think we're gonna get into this in FAQ stuff, and I don't want to get too much into things that are still being decided. The game's still, you know, there's still many endpoints that are being closed up around the game. But it's it's not legacy in the sense that you destroy things. I don't think things are destroyed, not from what I've seen. I think things are fully resettable in theory. But it's it ha it's a world that has a permanent impact. You're going on a journey. You have a, you have a character, and that character is going to go on a journey into these realms. But the, the story of the game is your character, and it's the way your character interacts with the worlds around you. Think MMORPG. Think about how when you play an MMORPG, your character is more the driving force of the story. Sure, there's worlds around you, there's events, there's things going on, those are all a part of it. But unlike Gloomhaven, like when you compare it to Gloomhaven, Gloomhaven is more about the arc of playing through Gloomhaven, and you'll go through multiple characters. In Spiritfire, you can and will go through multiple characters as well over time. Your character's going to go through their arc. They have Spark. Spark is this idea that they have a, a temporary life pool. That it's your energy, it's a limited resource that will eventually run out. But as you play through the game, you're constantly replenishing it, but you can't replenish it as fast as it's going through. And so, over time, you can elongate your life, but you can't permanently extend it. And along the way, you're being faced with challenges, because it is a living legacy game that is focusing on resource optimization as the core puzzle that, while you go through a story, while you go through a narrative, while you go through events in these realms, and you're constantly going through these, these challenges that will be modified by what you're engaging with at any given point. And those challenges drastically affect how you engage with the universe and what you're trying to do. But it's a, it's a Euro game. It's a Euro giant epic sprawling campaign game that you can play it for 30 hours and have a satisfying experience, but not fully see everything the world has to offer, but it, but it will have a defined end point for you. Like You can go through the game and play it for 30 hours and you're fine. You can also go through the game and play it for 150 hours or 250 hours and be fine, especially as they add new realms that will continuously give you ways to explore the game, ways to, to deck build your character, because like I said, it is an efficiency engine, it's an efficiency puzzle. At this point, it's starting to sound like the full on first impressions, which I'm realizing is really the goal of the first impressions video, so uh, we're going to move on from Spearfire. Anyways, the trip has been fun. Portland is famous for its coffee, did you know that? Because I think I kind of peripherally knew that. Portland is... I mean, it's not like a, it's like Vancouver or Portland, Washington, all that stuff, but like it's, it's, have you ever watched Portlandia? I've watched Portlandia a decent amount, and it's, this is a fun show, but that's neither here nor there. But uh, coffee has been definitely one of the highlights. I think Spiritfire and coffee have been the highlights of the, the trip so far. Spiritfire in the sense that obviously Spiritfire. And it, it's interesting, because we're going to go back to Spiritfire again, but one of the things I was talking to, to the ONEP crew about is the nature of how you can never keep up you can never keep up expectations forever. Uh, this thing is true for any company, but like, there are companies who have games that I have liked their games a lot. Too Many Bones, Ship Theory Games is gonna be a company I like most of their games. Uh, Fantasia Games, I like, I loved Endless Winter, and I love Unconscious Mind even more. The problem is, in inevitably and inherently, you can't love everything always. But ONEP so far has Vindication and Unsettled, which I love. With Spiritfire is always a challenge. I am incredibly interested in Spiritfire because of the fact that it's coming from a team that has put together two games that I love that feel similar and yet different at the same time. And to its credit, Spiritfire feels similar and yet different at the same time. It feels like they took the elements that made those games those games and expanded it to a much larger scope and scale. I think it's going to be a game that will be very impressed with many people. But for me, a big concern was like, if I love it, great, but if I don't love it, like, at some point, things are going to fall through. And we'll talk more about this in First Impressions, but my, my, my opinions are definitely nuanced, because I am incredibly excited for it. But there's still enough aspects of the game I haven't been able to experience to be able to confidently say I like it. There's concerns I have. When you present with me with a campaign game, and it's not really a campaign game in a typical sense, but it definitely has that arc or feeling to it. There's concerns I have. And so a big part of this trip has been talking through how to develop in a way that gives you an ongoing challenge and an experience. How to present something in a way that really captures the imagination and the target audience. By the way, it is pouring outside. Like, this is insane right now, the level of this rain. Like, I've actually been fairly lucky. It's been like, expect rain the whole trip. And then like, every time I walk outside, it has not been raining. But like, right about now, it is, it is definitely pouring outside. That is definitely a degree of, of weather that is less. Hey Tom, how's it going? It's going very well. How are you? Doing great, doing great. This is the vlog. You can say hi, vlog. Hi, vlog. How's it going? This is Welcome Tom. Welcome to the Tom vlog. From, I'm Tom. Tom from Monev. Of vlog fame. Of vlog fame. Vlog fame. How, how, what did be, have I asked you what your favorite part of Spirit Fighter is? I don't think so. What's your favorite part of Spirit Fighter? <sighs> um, my favorite part of Spirit Fighter is definitely the, like, discovery element of exploring the realms. Um, That's just, the element you're responsible for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like the part that I do. 
um, I think it's the best part. It's the most thought out part. It's the be most like professionally executed part is my part. I mean, fine, <laughs> fine, I'll take it. But yeah, that's, uh, so that's, that's basically what's going on with it. It's, it's gonna be interesting to see where things end up with the game. Uh, it's gonna be very interesting to see just like the, the scope and scale is incredibly ambitious. What they're doing so far seems to work incredibly well so far. But again, check out First Impressions for all of that. Uh, past that, we've got more shelf things. we got Monsters Mash over here, and toys, and all these, you know, the giant skull over here. Look at this, look at this, look at this skull. I feel like Oneb uh, and Ivy Games get their, like, things from the same place, because they both have their skulls and things. Anyways, we're gonna go get set up. We're gonna get set up for the uh, final video of the thingy, and uh, past that, I'm sure we'll see you more in the uh, vlog vlog. So we've got, we're getting the set all ready to go, making it all look all pretty. This is stuff that goes on behind the camera, because like, this is like, you're gonna see on the actual like set the thing, how professional it all looks, but like everything else is like just, just stuff that's out of shot. Hey, how's it going, Jaybird? Not so bad, up yourself. Doing well, doing well. Excellent. It's not actually Jaybird, it's just call him Jay anything. So today is Jay setting up the set, but yeah. But past that, this is like the more professional view we got. Like look how like, all cool it looks. We got like a full on camera and things like these. Like they have actual like, camera equipment and things. Like I, I don't know. I'm mostly just trying to survive in uh, filming videos. It's doing okay so far, but there's a whole lot more there. Meg, trying not to get run over by the car. Trying not to get run over, Meg. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. They're across the street. Hey, vlog, check out my hat. So. We kind of finished up after a long day. We've done our whole first impressions. We've done our uh, interview. Mark, I don't know if I asked you this earlier. I might have. What's your favorite part of Spirit Fire? Oh man. There's a lot that I really like about Spirit Fire. It's probably how I get to make significant choices that actually differentiate my character from everybody else. I think that's one of the key things for me. I can play the way I want to play and not have to play the way Tom plays or Eric plays or Meg plays. Speaking of Meg, now that you've played it, Meg, is I, your favorite uh, bit still a component, or have we moved on past that? Uh, I like the deck building idea. I did not get to deck build too much, but I am excited about. I guess I like there's a, like a little puzzle that you do to unlock your cards. Mm -hmm. That works. I like a lot of. Chris, have you played Spirit Fire? <laughs> I have had a demo like teach. What's your favorite part of Spirit Fire? Mm, well, could I the say art? the art? The art. The yes. art. <laughs> get what? Guess what? Curso does. Guess what? Winston. <laughs> two of you are both like. The best parts are the things you do. That's what you want. You want people to think their part's the best. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my my favorite part about Spirit Fire was playing it because that's the thing that I did. Okay, two flights later, and I think we're finally done. Meg, well, are we finally done? I'll be in the vlog tomorrow. You'll be in the vlog tomorrow. Can I don't we know. Recap in the morning. What? Can we recap in the morning? We'll recap in the morning, and it might be a vlog tomorrow. We'll see. There's lot. We have like seven thousand things to film. I know. Well, we can do a quick vlog. We got. We'll see. We have seven thousand things to film. We got we got work to do. It's it's travel work followed by work work followed by followed by travel work followed by more work work. All of it is fun work. So there is that aspect of the fun work part, which does make things a little better. But yeah. So um, maybe this is the last vlog. Maybe not. We'll see. Bye. Spoiler: We didn't actually finish the vlog, or at least not together. But basically, uh, we finally returned back and got together a ton of filming done as far as uh. Well, a bunch of things coming out. Dice Stone Missions, Divinity Original Sin, uh, Wasabi, a bunch of gameplays were, were filmed, recorded, all the fun work stuff was done. But no, we didn't actually finish the vlog. But that that's kind of a wrap, I guess. That's the that's the Orange Nebula trip. Uh, the, mostly the main focus and point was to sit there and play Spirit Fire. That was the main focus and point. There were theoretical plans of playing other games, whether Oneb's games themselves, or alternatively, even just like, you know, other games. I mean, I, I wanted to play Unsettled. I wanted to play Unsettled, or even possibly Vindication with some of the Chronicles expansions that I haven't touched yet. Both are fantastic games that I would have loved to have played. But ultimately, it ended up being an entire day of Spirit Fire. Just not like, you know, an hour, not two hours, just seven hours straight of just talking about Spirit Fire, playing Spirit Fire, theorizing about Spirit Fire, talking and planning and giving opinions and offering suggestions and advice and things we want to see and what would make the game perfect for us and also what would make the game better for other players and anything, anything and everything related to Spirit Fire. That was the focus of this trip. And I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for Spirit Fire. We filmed an interview, we filmed our first impressions, there's obviously this vlog as well. I think where I am with Spirit Fire is something that I covered, I don't know, I may have covered in the vlog already, I may have covered in first impressions, it's been a few days now so I'm not entirely sure, but I think Spirit Fire has a very solid core that feels like Oneb's other games. If you like 
the cue pushing, if you like the optimization, if you like the puzzly sequence of the way those games are, I think Spiritfire will speak to you. And it does so while being a much larger, more immersive, more ambitious experience. At the same time, it is a living game. It's not a campaign game in the typical sense, but it is a living game, and that does mean that any game that is designed to be played for 50 hours in a theoretically continuous story, and I say 50 hours as like a lower end, 50 hours might be a character arc, it, but you can play the game for longer than that, and so any game that's asking you to, to give it that kind of attention has a harder landing to stick than your standard game. And so I am very excited about Spiritfire. From what I've seen of it, from what I've played of it, I am very excited about Spiritfire, and I like what they're doing. I also throw up my hands with a kind of carte blanche, but I don't know. I don't know, because there's a lot of elements of the game we haven't seen yet, and there's lots of elements of the game that, that you just can't talk about when you've played it for a day as opposed to 50 hours. And so I'm excited, I'm intrigued, but also take it with a grain of salt until someone, until anyone has a chance to fully give it the time of day. But I will say, if you're an ONEB fan, if you like Vindication, if you like Unsettled, or if you like epic, sprawling campaign games, if you like games that give you the promise of, give you the promise of a hundred plus hours of Gloomhaven, but without ever raising your fist in combat in any way, shape, or form, because it's about the puzzle far more than it is about, well, fighting. I think Spiritfire is a game that should probably be on your radar. But we'll find out. I'm sure there'll be more coverage and more things to talk about as it gets closer. In any case, thanks for joining us for the vlog. This is a fun time and a good trip. And as always, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And I hope you have a good one.